Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are blending up a beautiful pink tube of Strawberry Kiwi Cleansing Conditioner. So a cleansing conditioner is basically a sort of regular creamy hair conditioner that contains a small amount of surfactant to boost rinse out to you know make it cleansing. And so in this formulation, that surfactant is a small amount of sodium cocoa amphoacetate, which is a amphoteric surfactant. If you'd like to use cocomidopropyl betaine instead though, uh, you can, and I have details on how to make that swap in the blog post linked in the description box below. The star ingredients in this formulation are gorgeous, lightweight kiwi seed oil and juicy, fragrant strawberry distillate. For conditioning goodness, I have used BTMS 25. I chose it simply because people often tell me they can only get BTMS 25, so I figured, you know, we would use that in this formulation. And then also some cationic guar gum. So if you don't have that, make sure you're reading the blog post, as always, for information on substitutions. When it comes to just how cleansing this cleansing conditioner is, I'd say it is quite mild and well-suited to those who have drier hair. Not only is the surfactant amount fairly low, but the oil phase is a bit on the higher side for what I would often do for a cleansing conditioner. Now you will notice that this is a rather thin finished product that is by design, so it's easier to work into the roots of the hair, but if you would like to uh, make a thicker product, I've got details on how to tweak the formulation for that also in the blog post linked in the description box below. Before we dive in, I do have a little bit of a note slash personal update. Um, I'm going to be moving house shortly at the end of April. And so in preparation for needing to take my studio apart and move it, I have filmed a bunch of videos in a pretty short period of time, which means that you're going to be seeing <laughs> The bandage that I have on this finger in quite a few videos over an extended period of time. And you'll also notice that I'm wearing gloves in most of those videos because I'm trying not to get the wound wet. So it is not some, you know, horrible festering zombie wound that's taking like a month to heal. It's just that I filmed a bunch of videos in a really short period of time. So it's just, yeah, it's going to linger in the video content until uh, after I have moved and I'm all set up in my new studio space in my new home. All right, I think that is enough chat. Let's go make this gorgeous cleansing conditioner. We're going to begin by combining the ingredients for our heated water phase in a small beaker. So in this beaker, I already have 41.29 grams of distilled water. The first thing I'm going to do is incorporate our dye. So this is FDNC Red 40 from Yellow Bee. This was a gift and it's crazy, crazy, crazy potent. So we need uh, technically 0.01 grams of this, uh, but that's very difficult to weigh out. So I'm going to take this glass stirring rod, uh, stick that in there, pull that out with a small amount of powder on it, and then stir that into the water and that'll be enough to color the product. If you're making you know, a larger batch and you can actually weigh it out, go for it. But for tiny batches, this works well. Up next, we've got 30 grams strawberry distillate. If you'd like guidance on how to use a strawberry fragrance oil instead of the distillate, please make sure you're reading the blog post. Five grams vegetable glycerin, four grams of sodium cocoa amphoacetate. If you're looking for substitutions, as always, please read the blog post linked in the description box below this video. Half a gram of powdered panthenol and 0.2 grams citric acid and make sure your scale is quite precise for that one. Up next, we will combine the ingredients for our heated oil phase in a second beaker. So you're going to need four grams BTMS 25, nine grams kiwi seed oil, three grams subtle alcohol, and 0.2 grams cationic guar gum. For substitutions, please read the blog post. Before we proceed, I'm going to weigh the water phase and note that weight, making sure to note that it also includes the spatula and the stirring rod. And so that will allow us to easily replace any water lost to evaporation during heating. So to heat everything through, I'm going to use a water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan with about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'm going to go put this on the stove top over medium heat for about half an hour to melt everything through and bring both phases to the same temperature. Once everything has heated through and melted, we can remove our water bath from the heat. I'm going to begin 
by taking our water phase out, drawing that off, and we're going to pop that back on the scale. And using a bit of preheated distilled water, we're going to replace the water that was lost to evaporation. Pour the water phase into the oil phase. Give that bit of a stir. You can see it's already becoming milky. And to combine and blend, we've got our immersion blender here, and off we go. Alright, so that was about two minutes of blending. I'm going to leave this to cool for a while and we can come back and blend it some more. Alright, it's been about five minutes. This is gaining some lovely viscosity here. Definitely still a wee bit warm. I'm going to give this a quick buzz with the immersion blender and then I think we'll set this aside and weigh out our cool down phase. All right, so I'm going to set this aside now uh, to continue to cool. And while that happens, uh, we're gonna weigh out our cool down phase. So our cool down phase is pretty simple. We need just three ingredients. So we're going to start with two grams of hydrolyzed quinoa protein. This is from Essential Wholesale and it was a gift. If you are looking for substitutions, please make sure you're reading the partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. Half a gram of liquid germal plus, this is our preservative, and 0.3 grams vitamin E, and this is an antioxidant. To learn more about this particular vitamin E, which is the MT50 variety, please read the vitamin E or tocopherol entry in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. Once the conditioner has cooled down to room temperature, we can combine our two phases. So I'm just going to pop a bit of the conditioner into our cool down phase, and then we'll give that a stir to combine, make sure everything's nice and uniform. And then back into the parent batch it goes. Now, before we package up the conditioner, we're just going to double check the pH. And so the first thing we'll do for that is you're gonna make a 10% dilution of the product. If you wanna learn more about why we do this, please look up pH meter in uh, the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. I've got some links on that there. And also, of course, on my pH meter. Pop that on the scale. I'm gonna weigh out two grams of product. And then add 18 grams of water to make a 10% dilution. And we'll whisk to combine. Grab our pH meter, take it out of its storage solution, rinse it off with some distilled water, turn it on and dry it off a bit here with a bit of clean paper towel. And then we're going to submerge it in our testing solution. And so I like to uh, tip the container so that we get uh, you know, the sensors fully submerged. And then we wait for the pH meter to give us a little happy face. 5.76, good stuff. If you'd like to learn more about hair and pH, I've also got some great links on that uh, in the blog. Once the conditioner is done, all that's left is packaging. So I'm going to be using this 100 milliliter soft squeeze tube with a flip cap. This is from Yellow Bee and this was gift. So to fill this, uh, first thing we need to do is you know, prop this upright. Um, and so you could use a funnel, but honestly, I think if you've got a fairly steady hand, um, you could just free pour it. So fingers crossed this doesn't uh, backfire horribly now that I'm filming it. Hooray! <laughs> no massive mess. And there you go. So we just made a lovely strawberry kiwi cleansing conditioner. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure to read the full partner blog post for more details, information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, links to places to buy all the ingredients, more information on pH, all kinds of things. So yeah, check that out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.